All right, so everybody with a D5100 out there knows that it's not quite the best for taking video because it automatically adjusts the exposure for you. Well, I found a way that it doesn't give you manual control, but you at least have control over the automatic settings, and you know what the camera is actually setting for you, and then you can lock that in. Now, the kit lens isn't the best for low light situations, but you can at least know what you can get away with at a certain ISO setting so it doesn't look all grainy. It's not very bright. If you want really good video in low light at a nighttime, you should get a faster lens. Uh, but you know, you can only work with what you got. So hopefully this will help you out with uh, making decent video with your uh, kit lens and other not so fast lenses. Alright, so one of the first things we're going to want to do is make changes in the menu settings. So we'll go into the menu, uh, scroll down to shooting menu, select that, and you want to find ISO sensitivity settings right here. Now you want to make sure this is selected on, and then you can set your maximum sensitivity. Uh, I like to choose 1600 because it appears to be the highest you can go without the video at night looking really grainy. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it set at 1600 and set the minimum shutter speed to 60th of a second. That seems to work uh, just fine for 30 and 24 frames per second. Now uh, you also want to make sure that you go to the custom settings and select the timers and AE lock. Now we want to go to the uh, assign the function for the AEL button which is here F2 and make sure it's selected on AE lock hold. This way if it's selected when you press the AE button it will actually keep your exposure settings locked. Alright so now that we have the menu settings set we can go ahead and uh, choose our shooting mode. Now you can shoot in almost all the modes on the camera but the only thing you really have control over is the aperture size. Now you can control the aperture and set it to whatever uh, f-stop you want to control the depth of field that you desire for the shot but the camera controls everything else. But with the way we set our menu settings, now we can actually monitor what the camera is choosing for us and we can lock uh, those settings at what we desire. So the first thing we'll do is go ahead and put it in aperture priority mode. That way we can control our aperture and then view the camera's automatic settings and then lock it where we want it. Well here we have the camera on and here you can see our shutter speed and our ISO auto letting us know the camera's controlling the uh, ISO which we know it does all the time but now the settings will actually change as we change exposure and here you can see we're in a uh, aperture priority mode now watch as we sweep into different areas of lighting and you can see the ISO changing and what you want to do is look for the ISO you want and uh, lock it. So since 1600 is the highest I like to go, I'm going to search for it to turn to 1600 and as soon as I see 1600 I'm going to press the AE lock button. So there it's 1600, 1250, 1250, 1600 and I'm going to lock it. So now you see the uh, AEL indicator here telling us that our exposure is locked and now you can see that it doesn't change anymore. So normally you can always just uh, press the AE lock button without having ISO auto on but when you have ISO auto on you can actually see what the ISO is instead of just guessing and looking at the LCD screen. So now we can actually lock at the settings we want. And that's all there is to it. Okay, so here's an example where 
I have the ISO <clears throat> locked at 1600 and as you can see there's not very much noise uh, especially in the very darker areas but uh, you know you can't see as much detail where there's light but at least it doesn't look noisy now if I unlock my exposure you can see that uh, it's adjusting for the uh, darkness but now you can see it's much noisier because it's cranked up the ISO and I think it's actually cranked up into the high settings the high point two, high point three, maybe even higher so you know you can use the higher settings it doesn't look awful but it still doesn't look the best what I like to do to get my ISO locked in the dark is to find the brightest light source you can and just point the camera at it and it should peg the uh, ISO on the low end which on this camera is ISO 100 and then slowly start moving our camera away from the light source and you can see it adjusting the ISO and just wait for it to change to the setting you want and then just lock it now that it's locked now it won't change alright so hopefully this uh, little tip will help you with your uh, filming experience and you won't have such noisy videos anymore uh, thanks for watching